Good morning, everyone. We are at Edenvale. Mike Victor Uniform is inside Chris's hangar. Um, I don't know, major surgery, minor surgery? Today, we are pulling off cylinder number six. Right from the get-go, cylinder number six on Mike Victor Uniform has been a concern. Um, with the Dynon, I'm able to track all of the uh, engine parameters, and cylinder number six has shown some problems. And so Chris and I have, uh, at every opportunity, got in there and borescoped it. And the uh, the exhaust valve is not spinning the way that it's supposed to. Cylinder number six heats up. It is always the hottest cylinder, and it's always just a little bit over temperature. Over the temperature that you want it to be at, and sort of bumping into that temperature where you get into sort of, oh, there's a problem, a real problem. And so uh, Chris didn't want to switch the cylinder. Um, we reached out to uh, some heavyweights in the industry, a um, couple of guys, one of them's really savvy and the other guy has uh, some superior skills when it comes to engines. And uh, they've been helping us along the way, we've tried everything. Um, everything that we could do to save the cylinder. And then on the last annual, a couple weeks ago, turns out that not only is the exhaust valve not spinning and burning and causing problem, the intake valve is sticking and leaking. Um, so we pulled the pin and today Chris is pulling that cylinder off and we are going to replace it with a brand new superior cylinder. So Chris, major surgery or minor surgery? It's, it's sort of like uh, minor surgery, day surgery we'll call it, it's because we want you out here today. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but change of cylinders, I, you know, uh, like, you know, I probably average one a month kind of thing. You know, I'll go a couple months without. I did six on mine in the fall. Um, I got six more we figured out the other day. You know, it's just common. Are you friends? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. And so, when we looked, we thought it was the intake valve. I'll get a pointer tool or something. We thought that because it, it seemed to be coming out the intake and there was a little blue mark right there. Yeah. That's what we thought the problem was. And so a thing you can do, just if you're curious, they call it a fuel test. You can pour uh, Varsol, that fuel or gasoline or whatever down in the ports here and you can see which port's leaking because the fluid will come back out of it, right? Well. So, just out of curiosity, if you want, you can do that and you can see how much, how badly it's leaking, that type of thing. Do the fuel test on it. So at the annual, Chris did the, uh, the compression, differential, differential compression, yeah. differential compression test, and it was definitely leaking out of the intake valve. From the ports. And with the spring load, they should stick. Now, if you look at the come and look, look at how quickly the intake is leaking. Yeah. Right, so you can see the fluid come around it. Yeah. Right. So the intake's leaking and yeah. And so when they rebuild them and stuff like that, they might do a fuel test because they can do compression, right? Just to make sure everything's seated in correctly. So you can see it leaking through there pretty good. Yeah. No fluid. And when you start searching about, you know, your valves and problems with the valves, it's always about the exhaust valve. Yeah. Except for there, you. Except for me. There's nothing ever about the intake valve. It's always the exhaust valve. Which the exhaust valve on this one wasn't, it wasn't spinning either. It was burning yeah, they, irregularly anyway. Yeah. We've, and this is the, like everyone's explained about the cylinder. The guys with electronic ignition. Yes. Uh, the, the savvy guys thought there might be something wrong with it. Uh, the oil analysis guy said there's a cylinder that's going bad. Uh, um, we've always sort of suspected this one. Uh, I'm not big on changing them too soon, so we wait until it went completely crap, and then we'll change it. <laughs> Package. New piston. Oh yeah, it comes a whole. It's a whole kit. Find it, Ginger. Yeah. It, yeah, so it, it's a cross hatch, they call it. And if you look in there, you can kind of see it with the right light. You can see it, like right there, you can see it perfectly. 
Okay. Yeah, and the idea is it, it, it entraps a little bit of oil and whatever, and it helps lubricate it. Right? And so it'll score, like ideally it won't, but eventually it'll score a little bit. This is probably a nitrated sonar, like they've done a treatment on the on the coating, uh, coating on it okay. to make it harder and more resilient to corrosion into about 1.2 inches. That's so good. Right. And the idea is it be straight, I think so. Oh, about there, hey, let's say, give or take a little bit. Reasonably straight. And I'll go in and check that with a gap. So there's our 0 0.023. And we run it in there. And it fits. Comes through, no problem. Nice and snug. That's good, no problem. So 0 0.023, and the other is uh, 0 0.36. So it says uh, uh, 1.2 inches, so that's about 1.2, close enough. A small amount of oil, we did that. Um, uh, uh, use the piston to ensure the ring is square. And the ring gap, I suppose, measure the top of the ring travel for 360, 475, 20, and 550s. Okay, so that doesn't include this cylinder. Right? So this may not have a choke on it. Right. And, uh, yeah, and, and always at the top. But it was, so we, what we could do is push it up and measure it again, but it's, from what I read there, we don't need to. Right. Okay. Uh, and so you have to do a similar thing for each of the rings? Yeah, and so that's our top one, and it, and it passes, so we pull it out of there. So each one, so we're identifying, I got a chart right here, which one's which. So in each one, like the, this is a, you know, they've all been gapped and everything like that, but you can see from an end profile, they have a taper, mm -hmm. and like that. So it says right on it here, top, top. So that's sort of critical, right? And so we'll get them on, we'll just go one at a time here, and then we'll opposite them. So the rings aren't lined up. So and they're nice and loose. And I say opposite, so I'm gonna move this one opposite the other two. They're around there. Will they stay opposite? No, no, they're gonna they should be rotating. And ideally they're rotating and they're moving around. Our old one, wherever it went, are you still moving? Yeah, they're still moving. So they'll rotate the whole all yeah, the time. Yeah, rotate and like a lot of times we'll get uh, compression through the ring, so you see that. You can imagine my contract compression check, right? Yeah. It's going to be a bit little extra leakage and it just rotates around. So uh, sometimes uh, you'll get a low compression, sounds like through the rings, go run it or fly it and come back and the compression will change because this moved away from it. Sometimes. Yeah. Right? And so in my, the way my compressor works, I can't put this on just yet. So we're going to, we're going to slide, we're going to do twice with the compressor. We'll compress, slide to here, and then we'll, we'll stop. We'll use it and we'll set that, take the compressor out. We'll put this in and then we'll recompress it and then go the, go the rest of the distance. So it's a two step because of this below this below the pin. So this oil ring, yeah, it's why is it why is it shaped like that? Um, it will it's, it's it's so it's oil control and so there'll be uh, you know sometimes there's a cavity within here like see up in here right or here right there okay and so the oil is coming up and in and this is controlling it. And so it's shaped like that, so it allows a, a little bit of oil through, but not spraying oil on the cylinder wall. Okay. So sort of, uh, they, they may be metering off how much oil the cylinder wall gets to see, and then whatever, and it's down below, so it's away from the combustion area. Of it. It's just controlling. It's controlling how much oil gets to the cylinder, really, through the holes, and then spread through. Some of them use a spring within this to kind of keep it wicked around all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's probably mostly for wicking, like so it gets all the way around. Oh, it stops over. 
complain about other people. <laughs> so that sleeve just compresses the rings to get it the uh, yeah. piston over there. And so like an automotive one, I could show you, I think I got one over there. It, it doesn't allow you to release it. And so what we want, because we're going to, let's see, we're nice and tight on there. Tops around it. And so, okay, so now this is kind of comes in a wire compression or oil control. This guy has to come on after, right? So see, I'm on my ring compressor. If I go back and this guy wasn't in the compression, yep. it's going to break it. And these guys are fragile. You know? okay. Somewhere over in that corner is part of an oil control from the last time I had a problem with that. Just boing, shot across the room. Um, yeah, so we'll come, we're going to go down. We're going to bring our, our cylinder to about here. And then we're going to do a little swap and you're going to have to help me and we're going to... Okay. You're, we're going to release and then and then put the ring in and then reconnect while we're sitting on uh, standby so this is lubricated i put a bunch of oil over the piston that's had some time to kind of roll around it um, all our bolts are lubricated um the I, I put a whole bunch of oil inside the cylinder and so we're everything's oiled up right now so we're ready to come on yeah. so now we're, we'll, we'll have to go to our continental cable limit which is in like the M-0 manual. Give us the torque specs on this and we'll get this all torqued up and then we'll be into the valve train, which we really have done nothing with. I didn't even pull the rocker cover off yet on that other cylinder. Lens poor engine, please send donations. <laughs> Carol. <laughs> Actually, I don't need donations. I need airplanes. I need airplanes to, to say, hey, Glenn, why don't you come on down and we'll do a free upgrade to the O320? <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> For replace the missing screw. Plugs are all torqued, caps are all tight. I think we're done. Pretty sure we're done. All right. Okay, so final checks. Checks out. What's that? I said final checks. It final checks. checks. It checks out. Yeah, we just got to run it. We'll run it for a couple few minutes. Really, we're just making sure it's running properly. It's not misfiring or anything like that. And we're going to double check for leaks. And so we're going to run the cowl off. Uh, just make sure it's okay. Yeah, it's all good. Let's take her up. Give her a run. Play it. Send you home. Now the
everything seems to be fine. So now it's uh, it's fly at home. And so Chris has given me instructions for the next uh, four or five hours of flying, power settings, um, things to be worried about, things to things to look after in order to break that cylinder in correctly. Edenville traffic, Mike Victor uniform taking off runway 31, left turn out departing towards Midland, Edenville. Everything's in the green, everything looks good, airspeed's alive. So we're about 30 minutes in and uh, everything's checking out. All the temperatures are good, pressures are good. Seems to be fine. We seem to be, uh, we seem to be doing well. And I've, I've chosen the route back to Oshawa that I'm always within glide distance of an airport. There's one stretch coming up that I'm, I'm gonna be maybe, maybe a little bit out of glide, but for the most part, in glide all the way. Oshawa Tower, this is Foxtrot, Mike Victor Uniform. Foxtrot, Mike Victor Uniform, Oshawa Tower. Oshawa Tower, Foxtrot, Mike Victor Uniform, Cessna 172 with information, Mike, currently 3,600 feet abeam the town of Uxbridge, inbound for landing, last departed Edenville. Mike Victor Uniform Tower, Squawk 5343. 5343, Mike Victor Uniform. Mike Victor Uniform Tower, thank you. Runway 12, altimeter 3036. You're cleared straight in approach. Report 5 miles final. Straight in approach 12, 5 miles final. Mike Victor Uniform. Bravo with you. Quebec Tower, winds bearable at 6 knots. Clear to land. Runway 12. Clear to land. Bravo with you. Quebec. Put the late timing. Mike Victor Uniform Tower, you'll be number 3 following Cessna turning tight left to base. About your 11 o'clock, 4 miles. Looking for traffic. Traffic in sight, Mike Victor Uniform. Mike Victor Uniform Tower, thank you, number three. Mike Victor Uniform Tower, winds variable from the south at eight knots, cleared to land, runway one two. Cleared one two, Mike Victor Uniform. We'll call you over the Delta. Tower, do you have traffic 12 o'clock, uh, two miles southbound, that's 2,700 feet. Uh, negative, okay. Whiskey Delta Tower, Roger, it looks like you're tracking southwestbound, they should be your 12 o'clock. Uh, or I see you just making the southbound turn now off your right wing by two miles. Mike Victor Uniform Tower, Fable exit left Charlie, contact ground, woman 84. Left on Charlie, contact ground, Mike Victor Uniform, thank you. And so there we go, Mike Victor Uniform back in the hangar in Oshawa, uh, uneventful flight back from Edenvale. Uh, no loud bangs, no oil slick down the side of the cowling. Everything ran fine. So over the next few flights, I just have some uh, power settings that I need to take care of, make sure that we break that cylinder in correctly according to what Chris has told me. Um, everything went fine with, with the install. So, uh, next few flights are going to be uh, fairly easy ones, just flying around, making sure that this burns in properly. And then we've got a full summer of flying ahead of us out to the East Coast and hopefully up to the Arctic. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.